Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about two books that I recently read by Taylor Jenkins Reid or Taylor Reid Jenkins. It's one of those, which is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six. If you hear that bell ringing, it is to remind you to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up. Um, yeah, just kidding. It's my cat who's being a jerk right now. So I guess she's just acting within her natural attitude span. So the first book I'm going to be talking about is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which stars the main protagonist, Monique, as she is she is um, doing an interview with Evelyn Hugo, the famous film actress, fiction, famous fictional film actress star in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And Evelyn Hugo is basically based off like a Marilyn Monroe, like Elizabeth oh, I'll put it on the screen, of her, like, of our time. So she's famous. She's known famously for her seven husbands and for her film actress star, like her her roles that she's done in the past. And nobody knows the mystery behind these seven husbands. Um, Evelyn's daughter, Connor, just recently passed away from cancer, and Monique has no idea what connection Evelyn has to her whatsoever. So before I get into any spoilers, I'm going to give my rating of this, which would be a six out of ten. I'm always going to be really harsh on my ratings because I'm taking time to read these books. So I really want to make sure that your guys' time is used appropriately and that you really understand from my point of view what you're getting into when you read this book. A 6 out of 10 isn't necessarily bad. Anything 5 out of 10 or less I would say is bad. 6 out of 10 is average for how I felt about this book. So it's not like a A to F scale. It's just really like nines or tens are going to be harder to come by for me they're probably going to be nostalgic books that I've loved forever and like I have rose colored glasses when I read them uh, so that is why I'm rating it a six out of ten but as far as like the reasons from the book I enjoyed reading the book I felt like it did kind of put me in that place now I did read it via audiobook which I would recommend because any kind of interviewee books, I would recommend reading audiobook because it's kind of hard to stay in the now. And the actresses who voiced the audiobook did a fantastic job. I would rate the audiobook quality like a 9 out of 10. They did a fantastic job. It is the way I feel to personally read this book. The plot twist was fairly good. It wasn't terribly predictable and the entire book as a whole wasn't very predictable. So that is my rating. That is how I feel about it non-spoilerish. And now let's get into some spoilers. All right. So those of you who read the book, how do y'all feel about Celia? I'm not a huge Celia fan. I'm not, I'm going to try to not make this ranty. I did not love Celia. I felt like she forgot that she is an actress and she's the one who wanted her to take the role after she got pregnant and I can't stand Celia. Oh, she just got me. Like I could understand Celia's point of views, but I still didn't agree with what Celia was saying and I still felt like she was kind of a jerk to Evelyn. Who did I love? Harry. I loved Harry. Harry is fantastic. Harry is great and I just loved him and I cried when he passed away. This is one of the only books that has ever made me cry. Not only once but twice. I cried when Harry died. I cried when Connor died because why'd they have to go and die? Like <sighs> okay anyway sorry for the rants. So Evelyn's character is of course extremely flawed and she doesn't disagree with the mistakes or choices that she's made in the past. I love that about her. I actually didn't disagree with a lot of the choices that she made either. So um, whatever that says about me, I really just, I connected with Evelyn's character. I felt for her. I felt like I wish she had a good relationship with Celia and I wish that Celia had understood her more. And I'm glad that we had Harry because I'm like, please don't let me hate the only like Les, like the only gay character in the book and we had Harry who was gay and I oh my god Harry poor Harry Harry was so sweet and that idea of like a soulmate not having to be a romantic partner I loved that I thought that they were so good together and I just I love the purity in their relationship and I loved how they kept like representing each other when she divorced Harry I was so upset of course you know it's not a bad divorce or whatever but I was so upset. So basically, spoilers for those people who want the spoilers and don't necessarily know if they're going to read the book because that's a me. 
So we follow Evelyn Hugo and we find out that she is actually bisexual. She's had seven husbands, but most of those husbands have been to cover up her lifelong love affair with Celia St. James, who is a lesbian. She meets her best friend, Harry, who is gay, and she has her daughter, Connor, with him. And most of her husbands were to cover up the fact that she is bisexual, but some of her husbands she loved anyway. So that's kind of it. She's made a lot of really tough decisions. When Harry passed away, she had to um, move his body to because he was driving drunk and she wanted and so the connection Monique has with Harry or has with um, Evelyn is the fact that Evelyn moved her father's body into the passenger seat and Monique has grown up her whole life thinking that her father dried, drove drunk for the first time in his life and passed away that way. So of course Evelyn's not making the great decisions, but I could also empathize with Evelyn a ton and just that idea of like doing whatever it takes to protect that person that you love. I can understand that, especially when they're both passed away anyway. Of course, she didn't do the right thing. Of course, it's terrible that Monique had those years where she thought her daughter or her dad was an alcoholic or had driven drunk. Like, of course, I feel terrible for them, but I'm also like defending Evelyn over here. Like, Evelyn's my queen. Like, I bow down. I loved the way they portrayed this bisexual character. I love the fact that Evelyn kept restating like, I am not a lesbian, I am bisexual. Yeah, I love that. I love the parallels between Monique and Evelyn as both being biracial characters because Evelyn is Cuban and and white. And then, um, I hate saying white, it makes me feel so weird. Um, and then Monique is African-American and white. So I liked, I liked seeing how that kind of worked together. And I, I encourage those who haven't read a ton of like different racial characters um, to read this book. It's a really great stepping stone into reading more from different points of view from different racial backgrounds, which is extremely important. And I'm glad that I read this book because I feel like it did widen my scope as a reader, which is why I'm doing booktube, is to get myself out there and reading books that I don't always necessarily read. So I would rate it a six out of 10, which to me, I know like if you do the math, it's like an F, but to me, that's more of like a C plus as far as how it averaged out worth the time reading versus worth the book itself so that's why I would rate it a six out of ten just because it didn't completely take my breath away it did make me cry so that's why it's a six out of ten but it didn't like ab completely absorb myself into it so that's how I felt about that book the next book that I read was Daisy Jones and the Six Daisy Jones and the Six follows a band in the 70s and an interview, it's all set in interview format as to why they broke up and basically it's kind of leaving it up to the reader. I would rate this book a 7 out of 10. The reasons to not get into spoilers is just because I got a little frustrated with the book, I got a little frustrated with the characters, I got a little frustrated with being a little bit bored. And it just, it wasn't, again, it wasn't everything to me. It was good. I liked it, but it just wasn't all, no. I would rate this book a 7 out of 10. And that's just because it wasn't everything that I expected it to be. I think I expected a little bit more out of it. So I wouldn't go into it with just like, it's going to blow your socks off. Like it's going to do a good job and you're going to enjoy reading it, but it's not going to be like, oh my God, this is the best book I've ever read in my life. At least for me, it wasn't, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. So I would give it a 7 out of 10. So the Daisy Jones and the Six follows the main protagonist, Daisy Jones, and the band The Six as they work their way through the 60s and 70s of rock and roll. And it talks about why they broke up because nobody really knows. Nobody did interviews. One day they just called it quits and that was that. And it's written interview style. And that is the plot line. I'm not going to give anything else away unless you want to stay for the spoilers. All right. Spoilers. Ooh, this book, I'm going to say it right now. If you have an alcoholic parent, if you grew up with an alcoholic parent or with a drug addicted parent, this book can be triggering for you because it was triggering for me. The character, oh, what was a stupid name? Billy. I didn't like Billy. I didn't like him one bit. Billy drove me crazy. He was so self-righteous and he was just so, mm, so stupid. And basically you find out that the interview is being given by his daughter. And 
she is basically doing a favor to her mother as to kind of like get her father like going again so she's interviewing all of the band members to find out why they broke up but billy's character is a drug addict and he marries camille camilla 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 yeah he marries camilla and then he goes out on tour and he just freaking cheats on her and starts doing all these stupid drugs and then he gets better and then he stays better but i'm still just like dude what's good i'm just mm. Mm, Billy got under my nerves and I think, I think the fact that he was so self-righteous to his child like talking about it like just own up to your mistakes dude I get that it's your kid and you might not want to be vulnerable but you're the one who made these decisions and did things the way that you did them so I and that's the part that I say is triggering for a daughter or like somebody who's grew up with an alcoholic parent like the last thing you want to hear is how great they were and how they did everything right or I know that he didn't say like that he was perfect and that he was an addict, but like the last thing you want to do is them justify or like f forget other things that they have done wrong. You just want to hear them as they are. And that is just my personal feelings as somebody who grew up with an alcoholic parent is like, that's just, that's how I felt because my dad constantly justified the things that he did and I didn't appreciate it very much. So that is how I felt about Billy. Daisy's character was like heartbreaking. She just... Like, she is one of those classic characters where she just wants to be known for her talent. And she just wants it to be known that she is talented and that she can do a lot more than just be a pretty face. Which is constantly, like, a parallel for, like, actresses or singers with, with women in the industry. Is we want to be known for a lot more than our bodies or our looks. And Daisy's character was no exception. So I definitely felt for Daisy. And I liked her character. My favorite couple was Graham and Karen. I thought they were so cute together and I was so sad that they didn't end up together but I kind of knew that they wouldn't because I'm like that's a lot of years. Uh, so and then I loved Camille, Camilla but I just I loved Camilla but I thought she could do so much better than Billy and I didn't have any problem reminding her as I was reading the book like you need to leave him because he sucks. <sighs> okay all right all right I'm cool. Be cool. I'm good. All right. Now on to one of my favorite parts of these books is you should read these books if you blank. So you should read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo if you enjoy reading about uh, LBGTQ characters. Um, you're going to enjoy reading this book. If you like reading about strong women characters, you're going to enjoy this book. If you want to open your horizons and read more about biracial characters, you're going to like reading this book. If you are biracial and you are frustrated about the lack of representation that is in um, books today, read this book. It's really good. Uh, hopefully it represents you. The only thing I know about being biracial or a different race is that I know nothing about being biracial or a different race. So I'm never going to pretend to represent something that I can't. But I am going to try to help myself and my mind by growing and knowing as much as I can. And hopefully this book is a good representation. If it's not comment down below because I will I want to read something that is and I want to not be ignorant so sorry I just felt like that disclaimer needed to be posted so I'm saying it now um read this book if you enjoy period pieces and do not read this book if you get frustrated by Camille which of course you can't know but still she's frustrated uh, do not read this book if you don't like different formats in books. If you like just a, if you like just a straightforward mm -hmm, type of format in book reading, then you're probably not going to enjoy this. Do not read this book if you don't like adult fiction. You're not going to enjoy it. And don't read this book as a segue into adult fiction. I don't think it's a good one. Now for Daisy Jones and the Six. Read this book if you like historical pieces. Read this book if you like different formats. Read this book if you don't mind reading about addicts. And read this book if you have, if you are like a singer-songwriter and you want some type of inspiration. I would read this book because it definitely inspired me. Do not read this book if you are triggered by drug addicts. If you feel, if you don't like self-righteous characters. If you don't like reading books of different formats. Because these books are both by the same authors, the to read and not to read are very similar, but those are my personal reflections and hopefully I help anybody out there who's thinking about reading them. I either help A, get them to read a book that they're really going to enjoy, or B, get them to not read a book that they're going to hate and spend their money on something that they can't stand. So those are my thoughts and feelings on these two books. I hope you guys are having a great day and thank you so much. Bye!